Dr. Sandhya Chintala from NASCOM. She is Vice President of NASCOM. She'll be talking on reskilling and skilling imperative for future skills. Dr. Sandhya Chintala is the Executive Director and CEO of IT and ITE Sector Skills Council, NASCOM, which is an integral part of NASCOM.SSC and NASCOM. Uh, she, she is the Vice President of NASCOM, which is Chamber of Commerce of the ITBPM industry. Her role at NASCOM includes providing the roadmap for ITBP industries, edu educational initiatives, programs with a vision uh, to develop education strategy, capacity building, assessment and evaluation. The development of industry standards to facilitate a quality talent pool lying between industry, acad academia and government, making India the preferred global destination for all IT and BPM and ITS requirements. I request Dr. Chinta, uh, Chintala to come on stage. We're in the space of AI, big data, cybersecurity, then you have 3D printing, IoT, RPA, cloud and social media, blockchain arrays, nanosensors, that's what I'm going to be talking to you about, how it's actually going to impact. So what you had the speaker before me talking about, envisioning what you want, I'm showing you how to transform so that you are actually career ready and as a continuous, continuous learning platform, how to sustain it. So I'm going to give you a lot of uh, info on what we are doing in this industry. Technology has become a horizontal. It's no more an independent uh, vertical on its own. So we have these major, in digital 4.0, we have these major programs that are actually forces that are impacting us. But there's one on point three is what I'm going to talk to you about. The question is, is it worthwhile for you as an individual, and many of you are auditors, et cetera, is it worthwhile for you to transform? And if you're going to be transforming, what should you be doing? How will you do it? Where is the opportunity for you to be certified in the new age? And basically, how are you going to continuously learn to be relevant to society and yourselves at large? So having said this, we envisage that in the future, the jobs are going to change drastically. Even for you as an auditor who has been in the hardcore numbers, any other professions that are around here? Anyone? Any other professions that you are here from? All of you are from cyber or it is from chartered accountancy, any professions? If you just give me a brief so that I can actually pertinently make it for you. Anyone? Yes, ma'am. Business excellence. Anyone else? IT services, all right. Chartered accountant. Okay, others don't want to say about it. All right, the question here is this. We are in the business of actually coding material that transforms. I mean, a material scenario that, for example, if you had a requirement of a pacemaker in your heart, the pacemaker today is in the size of a small capsule, right? It is intravenously introduced into your system and through a process of IoT, Internet of Things or Internet of Everything, the biological systems talk to the digital transform system. It transmits the data continuously to the cloud. And once it transforms into the cloud, there, like a post-paid card, you will actually pay the services for which you are rendered. There is also a huge amount of cyber hacking that goes on. But within all this, how will you actually audit a billion individual people or audit a company that is into this process. I have actually a, something called precision agriculture, where every plant gets the amount of water and the amount of uh, fertilizer that it requires. So there is a drone that actually goes around, like you've seen the one before that is roaming around here. Through nanosensors, all the hectares of actually are sensored, where in which it'll tell you predictive-wise how much water and fertilizer is required, and precisely that amount is done. This increases the yield per hectare almost 25%. Having said this, we can actually say somebody is having a problem in the healthcare system, and here, basically, somebody wants a, three, a liver or a kidney. Through precision, I can actually take your stem cell and 3D print a fully functional liver or a kidney. 
how will people actually audit this? How is the service going to be made available? How will you sustain and manage this? This is just a little glimpse of what's going to be. That falls in the 9% basically of non-existing job roles that are going to come. But if I take 9% of India's 600 million, that is 54 million jobs. 37% of these jobs, which all of you are now actually doing, will go into working with machines. It's not either or, it is working with machines. So it's either in the services sector or the product sector, I'll give you a glimpse of it. But 54% will be in legacy. So many, those of you who are actually working in the jobs that you are, specifically in India for another three to five years, you'll be quite comfortable in doing what you want. But post that, Either it has, you have to transform, otherwise there's not on. In our own industry, we're leading 2,700 companies, which actually talks about 97% of the human resource, as well as 95% of the revenues that we earn, you find that this 54% is quite sustainable to some extent. But we think that the 4 million people who are directly employed and 20 million who are indirectly employed all of them have to be reskilled. They have to actually learn how to work with the new technologies. So we are thinking of retraining, and all of you should think of getting yourselves retrained on the new technologies. That's where the relevance will come. We think almost 30% of those who are now working in where you are at should have an awareness as well as get to learn. So if I were to say when we are actually strategizing for the country being the chamber of commerce for this uh, uh, industry body, we have put up that by 2022, 25, this will be a trillion dollar economy. Today we are about 154 billion, but all of you are contributing, it will be a trillion dollar economy, and in a trillion dollars we are one fifth, if India is to be poised to be a five trillion dollar economy. But look at the blue section. The old jobs are just going to be about 48 to 49 percent, and the new jobs will be about 51 to 52 percent. So whatever you used to do as a job, you will actually have to upskill and transform so as to be working with machines. This is how we actually, now to do all this, it's very easy to talk about it, but tomorrow you'll come back and say, where do I go to learn? How do I get myself certified? How do I let my company know that I'm ready and I don't have to have a pink slip, but I'm actually ready for taking the next step? So from the envisioning, I'm actually letting you know how to transform yourself. What is the instrument that NASCOM has put together for, to help you transform, which is an international standard? Because one of the biggest things that we have found is that the way you're going to work in the new digital era will drastically change. There's not going to be loyalty to one single company. You will be working for multiple companies, two hours for somewhere in Vietnam, five hours for somewhere in Canada, and the rest of the time in India. This is because in the new age work, it doesn't matter where you are, you can work anytime, anywhere, any place, but you have to be competent. So how do you portray your competency and your learning is a critical enabler. So most of the time, you say information security or cyber security has been one of the legacy roles which we are pushing forward into the future. The rest of them will be recombined sometimes subsidized or basically disappear. So out of the 48 occupations, the last column is the 10. Robotic process automation, internet of things or everything, AI and big data analytics. So we were thinking AI is specific, big data is specific, now it says it's all one bundle. 3D printing, next is already 4D printing or what we call is additive manufacturing. Cloud computing, all of you know about. Augmented and virtual reality, that's how we are going to actually help you learn. Because if I were to give you a headset and you actually virtually are enabled to learn, it excites your neural networks in your brain and the speed at with which you learn. You are actually feel like you're trapezing or you're learning a vehicle or you're learning how to even drive a plane. I can actually play around with your mind. You have a cell phone, remember it was an avatar of what was long ago, your handset where you used to go stand in the queue to make a STD call, and then it went into a mobile phone. Now I'm actually going to have something which is like a glove which you can wear, and subsequently have a chip which I can embed into your system. Somebody talked of teleportation last time. I'm actually talking of holoportation where you can actually physically be somewhere just by 
having pictures. Subsequently, we'll be able to break up and disseminate you by using genomics, where in which I can actually take every part of you and put it. It's like your Star Trek movies. It's all coming to be. It's an exciting phase, but it is going to be exciting if you're also ready for it. Having said that, we just basically see that this is the data explosion that is creating it and the transformation for every one of you, yourself and myself. Kalpana asked before me, how do you learn? Somebody said every day, and I would think it has to be much faster than that. It's literally every day is even a long time. The job roles that we had identified earlier on, you know, we had done about uh, 84 job roles at the entry level, and about 500 roles, because we are trying to create a standard and say, what is your job? What do you do in your job? What do you need to learn to do in your job? If I have to move you from where you are to some other point, I need to analyze your job to say what you need to move. That exercise has been done. What are the technologies that you should know? And if you know this, where should I take you to the next point? Otherwise, it's so difficult if I say transform. How will you do it? There's no instrument to help you transform. There's no place for you to go get yourself certified, right? The having said all of this, there's a new scenario. I'll just give you this, because many of you are in the auditing space. I'd like you to even think about this. We're in the space of genomics. You can actually have a child that you want. You like blue eyes. You like somebody with a long memory. You want somebody tall. You want somebody with a lovely car car caramel color with long hair. Choose your genes. I can gene splice. How it came about was there was a child who was to be conceived who had a genetic malfunction of Parkinsonism, right? We were able to detect the child's problem when it was in the mother's womb. We, using technology, removed that gene, and basically the child is born healthy. So now, when more and more of you, as you see in your scenario, when you have different ways of working, we are also noticing people are not having so much time in work-life balance, and you might not even want to have a child. Now you say, that's crazy. But look at Japan. The average age of people is 65 years. They don't have children. Now, if you don't have children, what do they do? They want machines. We have an overpopulation here, and in this overpopulated world, imagine this whole group becomes older. The system in the country is going to collapse because we are not ready to actually handhold an older population that is not contributing to the economy. The system of the younger children who actually are earning pretty high, they are not able to extend their rupees value to also look after extended family. Now, if I were to, again, once again, go to the Japanese family or why they don't, you will see in Europe, in Canada, Vietnam, all the other countries also, they all seem to have decreasing younger populations. So one of the advantages in India is that can we actually transform our own people with this explosion of data that we have and the technology that we can embrace to become the human resource capital for the rest of the world in a virtual fashion? So you do your accountancy here, you do your services product, everything that you do in India, but you're actually servicing the world. For that, you need to learn, and also you need to have a competency certificate. You see this Trivago ad, you want to go and have, have yourself in a room. When you want to actually book a room, you look for all the ratings, you also look for the price points. That's exactly how people will look at you. So when you put up that you are competent in this, the large companies that we are here will actually disseminate. We are finding the small and medium companies and even smaller companies are the ones that are going to grow at 35% to 40% cigar, where the large mammoth companies are going to disseminate because of their inability to innovate. So what we're trying to do is, can I actually help people like yourselves and help ourselves as an industry body to actually transform yourself, to look at job standards, identify them so that it's a quality assurance norm. Because every time you want to purchase a television or you want to purchase uh, <clears throat> a vehicle, you always want the best quality, right? Yes or no? Yes. But when you want the quality in your mind, you have some standard that you peg it against. But when I want to hire a chartered accountant, you have some quality through an accountancy exam. But the rest of the country, we don't. I don't know who's a competent web developer, or a cybersecurity expert, or an AI architect, or a data scientist. I have nothing to actually look at it as a standard. Each one is saying, like a part of the elephant, this is what a data scientist is, or this is what a cybersecurity expert is. Therefore, the creation of standards, 
the creation of a quality assurance with reference to competency and the ability to innovate and speed up the process important. The thing is, all of us are looking after and running after existing jobs. None of us are actually thinking we have to create jobs. I'll give you a small stat. In the US, it's a 16 trillion economy. And the number of engineers, graduates that come out is about 1.6 lakhs. In India, we are a two trillion economy and the number of graduates is about 16 lakhs. So we don't have jobs for everyone. So it's not that your job is safe because it's changing. It has to change for us to actually keep pace with the rest of the world. The question is, how are we going to embrace this change? And therefore, I need an instrument to initiate you. Our universities and colleges, where else do you go to learn? You used to think, I've done 21 years of learning, three years, which is your graduation, post-graduation. For 30 years, I'm set. Sorry. Even if you know something in six months' time, these job roles are changing as much as weekly. So your ability to continuously learn is very, very critical and to upgrade yourself as a competency. But having said as, what do we do about it? So you will find that if I have big data, if I have Internet of Things or virtual reality, everything, there's no one single point that will say this technology will create. It's an integration of everything. I'll just give you a brief. In India, we have a shortage of housing. We have a shortage of water distribution. We have a shortage of electricity and power. These are problem statements. But if you look in a global scenario, and even for India pertinently, there is no sand. There is no water. So how will you create a home? So the solution is, can we not 3D print it? It's a viable option. Russia is doing it. So when I have a 3D printed home, what are the terms and conditions of how it will actually work? What are the companies will learn it? What is the audit process that you will put in place? Right? If I want to look at water distribution and if I want to look at uh, basically electricity distribution, the power shortage is huge. Right? So I want to put an AI, a big data process, where in which I can actually say how much is the consumption per individual in the house and therefore make that information available. With the amount of data, the ERP processes can actually do it. It actually explodes a new avenue of business. But in all of this, how is it that we as individuals would like to work is a different ballgame. So the, once again, I'm always reiterating is that how will we do? So we had around about, for this industry body, around about 80, 84 jobs which are in the entry level. So all our universities and colleges said, let's come, give us those jobs and we'll learn. And we said, what's the point? Three years, when you graduate, you're outdated. My technology is changing maximum every month, literally. So how do we have a process of managing this change so that you're still relevant? So those of you who are sitting at jobs for 20, 15 years, unless you embrace the new technologies, you will be outdated. There's just no way about it. So how do we manage, where do we go to learn? So we went back to the universities and said, can you actually do it? They don't have faculty. So we need faculty, we need processes. So the questions were, we're adding 66 more job roles. And they're all integrated. And it should be out by in about six months or so. Having said all of this, I'm going to just take the AI, big data, and cybersecurity skills per se as a case in point, because we have done some deep dive. What has happened is, how do we transform? So this is that part. The Prime Minister's office said, India with its population, because cyber will be, with data being prolific, will be the new mantra. Warfare will be through cyber. Your daily life, your life will be on a chip. It will be out there for everybody to see on the cloud. How do you manage your own identity? How will you get your work done? How will you manage your finances? Everything is out there. So they said, can India actually, because of its brain power, be the hub for the world. So the Prime Minister's office has said, NASCOM, take on this role and see that everybody is cyber enabled. Having said this, what we happened was the study, 5.2 million jobs are available in cyberspace in the next five years. And we don't even have 50,000 of them in place. So you need to know this information. So we need, I'll take you through and say, what are those job roles that we are looking for? So groups like Isaka, SANS, IC Square, NICE, Data Security Council of India have got together and actually designed a program and said every year we re revisited 
design job roles so that you all can work and enable yourself to be relevant to the transform world. We just did the same thing with AI and big data. So it says 2018 and by 2021, almost about 0.5 million jobs are missing. So we need to increase, we have about uh, 0.37 million jobs in AI and big data right now, but about we have a missing amount of almost uh, 0.23, which means 2.3 lakh people are required. I'm not even able to get 50 people because these technologies need something like, of course, Python, Hadoop, you'll need, uh, but they don't need it at the basic level. I even need it at level five. I need a Spark and a Fume and an Angular JS and a combination of these technologies. It doesn't matter which you know because the product and the solution must be melt. Having said this, go back to universities, colleges. It's not there. Nobody is using a combination of this with blockchain as well as with sensors combined together. IBM brought out a microchip, all right? Now with blockchain arrays, etc., no one's talking of cyber security in the dark web. Nobody's talking of cryptocurrency, which is going to be there. What's going to be your audit process in the dark web and crypto? Israel masters this. So I'm trying to get faculty from there to actually talk about it. So the world is going to be different. If you're going to think that we are going to have cash and we are moving towards a cashless economy like the rest of the world, but we are going to do it on bitcoins, how are you going to manage this? Already in the government, we have pushed what is called skill coins. So you will not get a subsidy for learning something, but I will give you skill coins which will go into your skills wallet and like a passport, it tells you, here, yeah, you're ready for this job. Government wants to have all of its employees done in that particular way. So likewise, I need you all to say, how are we going to actually work? So we are having a whole team of people working on cryptocurrency and seeing how trading is happening in the dark net so as to basically say what is it that and how we can actually manage it. But we don't have people in that area and we're looking for actually people to learn to move into that space. So having said this, uh, this is what we found out in the uh, big data and AI space. We have to structure it for you to learn. So we said there are some job families. There's a family called architecture. There's an administration and governance family. There's engineering, analysis, and strategy. In that, we have identified what you call various tracks and then various job roles. Now, these job roles, the government is going to give it every other sector, right? And then agriculture, healthcare, tourism, pharmaceuticals, electronics, automotive, banking, financial services, everybody will add a domain specific module to it. So you will have the basic structure and then, then you get job ready in that particular area. So everybody needs to see that AI, big data, and cyber will impact every other industry sector in the country. They cannot do without it. And that's what the government is planning and says, by the next five to six years, Everything must be transformed, and how are we going to do this? So one of the things is, uh, this is a little bit more detail on cyber. When we were building it with Isaka Science and IC Square, we have asked Isaka to actually become our master trainers to help the faculty. There are about 2.5 lakh faculty out of 770 universities at 83,000 colleges in India which does not do this training. So how am I going to plan for the next level of people for this economy to survive? The sustainability of this economy is itself is at risk. So players like you who are in the game need to upgrade because you have to be actually master trainers. You have placed both sides of the coin to actually do this. So we talk to user organizations, we talk to consulting organizations and IT service organizations. They came up with a map like this, right? And then they said, again, these are, you're talking about network security, application, IDAM, endpoint, data security and privacy, cyber security assurance, cyber forensics, security operations per se, incident management, BCM, industrial control security. Having said, they said, there are about 30 jobs. They told us, just plan this 11 job roles and those courseware too was made available because, because when we went and gave it to the universities, they didn't know what to do with it. They did not know how to write because each of these jobs does not tell you the literature. It only says this is the outcome, performance. So if you're working in the job, it only articulates what is your outcome of performance. And you have to enable somebody to actually do this. But a little bit of interest from your point here would be, this is how you will have to learn. 
You cannot go back to school or to college. You have to do a virtual learning scenario. So I'm just going to skip these points down here. So what we have done is to how to help you learn. So what we did was we put up a new platform, which is AI enabled, called a future skills platform. It is an aggregator. It's a marketplace. Now, if you want to go and buy soaps, you want to go buy food articles, you want to buy your utensils, you want to buy some furniture, you go to different, different shops. Imagine you have just one marketplace where everything is available. This is what we have done. We have got together. We have got together all the players in the world, the Coursera, the Audacity, the Simply Learn, the Plural Sites, the Udemy, the edX, the Edcast, say what you will. Every top player in the globe is a partner on our platform. You don't have to go to individual sites to go and learn how to upgrade your audit process to be working in a healthcare system on a process like genomics. It's going to explore. The amount of opportunities will be immense. We have seen this happening, and we have read about it in the four industrial revolutions, three industrial revolutions that we have had before. The first one was basically on the steam engine. The second one was on electricity. The third was on computing. And now, basically, it's all on the disruptive technologies that have come to be. Every time, people said, oh, we're going to lose our jobs. It's not going to happen. It just explored it. Right? So it's going to become more customized. Everybody loves to have it. Look, just look the way they love to do selfies. All the time, they're so immersed in the self. So this is the level of customization that will happen. But you can go learn here. So what this system does is basically, let me take you to this. The pathway is you want to discover. You want to actually become a data scientist, or you want to become a cybersecurity expert. You want to become an audit expert in cyber for the darknet or in cryptocurrency. Where do you go to learn? You enter the platform through a registration. Presently, it's open to a B2B. A B2B is a business to a business. So any business house can become a member and sign up with us. When you register, I give you 600 hours of free learning. I would have collated for you the uh, YouTube uh, information, TED Talks. I would get you all the lectures from your Stanford, the Harvard, the MITs. I would also got, get you all the articles on it. So you have, first and foremost, what you do is you discover whether you have something for that, a yen for that particular area. You have to know whether you really like it. Just because the crowd is moving, you cannot go towards it. Having said that, then you say, do you think I really have an ability to do this uh, accountancy in this particular area. So you will give you what is called smart cards. You can experience the job role in the smart card. Having done that, all this time, it's all freeware. Once you've done that and you say, yes, I think I know this, then we put you through a small, uh, what do you call it, diagnostic. In that diagnostic, it says, Dr. Sandhya, you want to learn to be a data scientist, but ma'am, you don't even know a Spark. You don't, you don't know the basic technology language tools to able. So it takes you to a pathway to actually learn that first. Once you learn that, then it says, now you're ready to do the deep skilling, and you actually pay for the Coursera's, the Audacity, and the Simply Learn. At the end of it, there's a Government of India certificate. There's also a certificate from the individual players who are working on this. It's a massive platform. Already we have, we launched it in about a month and a half ago, and we have about three lakh players already registered on it. We're not making it available to everybody. But once it goes to a B2C, that is every individual, a retail person wants to come on it, it's a huge explosion. Countries like UK, et cetera, said India has a front runner in this. Nobody has it. But then we are looking for also contributors, so companies like Infosys, TCS, Google, IBM, Wipro, KPMG, we'll be inviting them to, to actually have their own academies. And they've done a lot of curating and a lot of pathways. They offer it as freeware or as business propositions on it. So there's a wealth of information for you to learn. There is a process for you to transform. And there is also a platform for you to sustain your relevance in the future. It's an exciting phase, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the new world. Thank you. Any questions that you'd like to ask? You're mentioning cryptocurrencies? Yes, sir. Yeah. So what? So what? What is not banned that we are not playing it? 
It's what is banned okay. now in the way. Body, Hear me out, sir. So the world, it's a new technology, it's a new process that has to be played. It's banned because the rules and regulations of how we do it is not actually formative, is not helping the player. But it's not that it's not there, it is there. Today, can I now play around with the genes of an individual and transport one gene from one person and to another? I can't do it, but the technology has not stopped. We are innovating, right? The problem is, if I were to have a gene which is a combination from five uh, women and two men, whose property belongs to this guy, the little baby? Who is belong to? Who is the owner of this child? He's got properties, each one of those people. Who does it go to? We have a host of problems that are coming in. But what technology does, it innovates. It start, doesn't stop you from there. Limited is, now I'm 3D printing a fully functional liver. There's a young person, brilliant, this person is dying. Now I'm able to do it in about 48 hours. I take the stem cell of the person and I'm 3D printing it. So I'm working with students who do all of this. So everywhere throughout the country and the globe, I work with people who are thinking far ahead. So what is not right today will definitely become later because how is it that you're going to have a global economy where the currency is actually fluctuating from point one to point B? So there will be a process where it'll come. So if you are thinking, hey, that is a new way to think about Come and join the bandwagon in innovating and transforming. This banning something is human nature because it doesn't work. Because people got cheated, terribly lost their time. But tell me today, how many are not being cheated in the existing process that we have? Every one of you in your own account, when you see uh, you withdraw cash or you get money into it, you look at the rupees, how many of you notice your, the paise? There will be 0 0.34, 0 0.87, nobody notices. How many of you don't know that somebody can actually hack in the system and draw that for a billion people? Nobody notices it. Is it not, not illegal? But now I can have an AI process. I can actually preempt that because I have huge amount of data to be able to actually look into it. So the big data and the analytics that goes along with it. So I have predictive analytics and I'll be able to find solutions and see what the best out of it is. So every one of these pathways, sir, uh, is will be right or wrong, depends on how you use it. So if I may say cyber warfare is wrong, isn't it wrong? But is it stopping anything? The next wave of warfare is I can actually sit here and uh, use one of our young students is able to change AI one uh, pathway from the president of America sitting in a small home in India in Coimbatore. You're saying ends justify the means? Ends don't justify the means and things, sir. Uh, it's, what I'm trying to say is if you have to say a whole ecosystem is going to grow, there's always a possibility, each we can always find a scenario. Sorry, interrupt. If each one of us were to create, because we have the capability, technology to create our own currencies, can you imagine the chaos that will happen in the economic world? Obviously, sir. Yeah. What do you think as an industry body, we don't. That's the reason why we're sitting back, is it? That's the reason why you use the word that it is banned presently. But we will find a solution for it. There is no reason that you have to have independent currencies. Earlier on, we never had one. It's always trade. So now we will have a trade. It's a different other platform for trading. It's not that we're going to have cryptocurrency is one way of trading. Another one we will find. It's only a digital currency that is moving around. So, so that's, that's how it will happen. Yeah, with that amount, I think that's NASCOM view. That's no, it's view. not NASCOM view. We are servicing the globe. So what I'm talking to you is of a global nature. All my member companies, almost uh, every one of them has got global scenarios. 83% of our uh, business is global. But we are also looking at the India structure. So here also we're looking at how we'll be working and how will we trade from one scenario to another. So it's the concept. When you give a service or buy a product, it's a process of payment. That's all there is to it. If you have a different online currency, we call it cryptocurrency. That's it. But it's not working because the rules and regulations are not in place. Once they are in place, it will be tested and tried out, and then it works. So it's presently there's a scenario of banning anything in technology is only limited. Uh, it's because of the utilization and the rules and regulations. It's always helped to uh, help mankind. But what I'm trying to say in our program is that technology will move far ahead, and we as a population need to actually address this technology. <coughs> so how we do it defines our, uh, uh, what do you call it, our uh, position in the global economy. <coughs> yeah, we have NPTEL as well as uh, SWAM on our portal. Where that is there is, it has got a group of lectures given by different people. But when we asked individuals to run through it, just by listening to a TED talk, you don't become an expert on it. So you provide a platform also 
We provide a platform for you to learn. We provide you online mentors. We provide you online cloud space where you can actually go and code and learn and hack and do things. Because if I learn about the hacking process, it doesn't work. You have to actually experience it. So we actually provide you space for you to do that and then for you to actually excel in it. Yes, ma'am. At present, it's on a pilot phase, ma'am. So I think by October end, uh, we should be opening it out to other businesses. But if you're keenly interested, at present, the businesses that are going on board are part contributors as well as part users. So most of our member companies we're putting because it has to be experienced. We've already got requests from about five countries globally to become partners. We're saying, hold on. Uh, because putting together such a uh, massive process is very difficult. It's at very cheap rates. For students, we're looking at about 100 bucks. What is it on a MOOC? Where did we a MOOC is a place? very archaic place. A MOOC, this is uh, 20 times advanced to MOOCs. MOOCs basically actually gives you a, it's a massive online open courseware. But beyond that, it does not provide you, some instances provides you a mentor, some it does not provide you process where you can go and learn. So all the MOOCs in the world are partners here. You can make a choice of whatever you learn. But this uh, process of learning, which is experiential learning, simulated basis of learning, you can actually go and learn how to build it, try it out, etc. All of this is uh, totally online. It's very much more advanced than MOOCs. So with an registers, how many of them will actually be? There is. It, it goes en masse. It in mass. If there are some GenPAC registered the other day, 75,000 people registered altogether in one week because they're all experienced. Because we have been told that 30 to 40 percent of the people have to upskill and reskill, otherwise, it's over and above. So that's how so it's running. Are you thinking that the jobs? No, ma'am. Uh, companies, we will not provide jobs. For anybody who comes from a B2B, it's strictly that we don't give them an opportunity because the company does not want to lose them. They are investing in their learning. But for others, when you do a B2B to C, they definitely will open up a portal and saying, this is a person who is certified as a special pen tester, and therefore it is open to the global market to hire them on a virtual platform. But that's yes. The social reality of today. Yes. Uh, the unorganized sector is contributing yes. to almost 50% of the Right, community. right, right. And considering that 243 engineering colleges are being closed down because of lack of skill, and NASCOM is still telling that most of the engineers coming out of the colleges are not employed. Yeah. A 22, 25 percent of uh, contribution of GDP by 2025 ah. looks very far-fetched and not that, you know, it's closer to the social reality. How do you think? I have two or three points I'll take from you. One is that we have said all of this content is available. It should reach the last mile. So when I go to every state government, they say, okay, one million users. We would like to register online. But the moment they do that, the problem is there is no fiber, there is no bandwidth, there is no device. But this is device agnostic. You can read it also on a smartphone or a cell phone. And the capability of video streaming is extremely high. So we are actually looking how to stretch it to the last mile. This is the India problem that I'm facing right now, where 72% of our people are in the uh, villages. And uh, what you have said is they're not improving as yet. So that is one major problem. The other one, we have noticed on our statistical analysis that we have done, that the rest of the companies and the majors who are able to do it with technology are moving ahead. So despite, it's not a scale model anymore. We used to hire in large numbers. Now we're going to go niche, where the niche is going to be 30% of the people will be working with machines. So that automation will get right by quality and the ability to predict and to do proficient, specific, work will be highly increased. So our prediction is that uh, we should be able to increase the percentage and grow from 154 billion to a trillion dollars in the next five years. And therefore, what we are seeing is the delinking of human resource requirement to the revenues. So we are still seeing that without the market, <coughs> we will have problems of actually scaling it because the economy must grow in a coherent way for the country. So that's where we are going back to the government and saying, this is what we have found. How do we get this information and this learning to every nook and corner of the country? So they're working on it. Yeah, Let's see how that, it is. Doesn't it create a digital divide? Absolutely. It does create a digital yeah. divide. It does create a huge digital divide is created. Huge digital divide. So NASCOM kind of body should also undertake a social, economic, uh, technological spectrum of studies to understand this and probably influence policy decisions to... It precisely is doing that. So we have Ministry of uh, IT, 
that is mighty we are working with, Ministry of Skills, Ministry of Rural Development, the Labor and Employment Department, all of them we are working because we've taken these problems, we have seen where the technology is going and how it behaves as a horizontal. So all of this is being done. It takes time for government decisions to happen. Any other questions, sir? You are absolutely right, ma'am. We are working with the AICT and UGC to make it a part of the college uh, curricula because according to them, 20% of their learning, if it's online, it's considered a part of the credit equivalence. Now, if all these jobs are blessed by the Sector Skill Council, which NASCOM also is, then I have credit equivalence. So I have 400 hours of learning and IDAM process. That 400 hours, 15 hours is two credits. The same credit equivalence is given. So a new program called Bachelors of Vocation in Universities and Colleges is running where it can become integrated into the existing curriculum. So lots of loose points we are trying to bring together to make this transformation happen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What is it, sir? Ah, yes. At present, it's a B2B. B2C is going to come forward probably in early January 2019. It's there. Because it's in the early stages, what happens is a lot of uh, problems will come. How are courses being developed? What is it? All the alliance partners are coming to. It takes a bit of time. And if I put it to a B2C, again, it's creating the digital divide. Because only those who have handsets or those who have laptops will do it. What about the rest? So I cannot bring it into the university structure unless every university government or private have the same uh, technology as well as the uh, infrastructure. This is where we are having the problem. Yes. You know, I see most of the times when NASCOM takes up something, it's all the big companies which are invited initially at first, and even the startup India companies and others are not in there. But disruptions come from these companies. But I don't see that invitation coming to the startup companies or others to be involved in this. We'll take it forth, sir. But as far as I know, we see that the need for this particular platform is for the small and medium companies where they cannot invest in uh, up-training and upskilling their own, and therefore they need a ready prepared individual and that's this why this platform was put because our prediction is that 35% to 40% growth will come in the small and medium which is very agile with new uh, requirements. So it's meant for them but uh, it's in early phases but this is only a concept that has come up and it's now being trialed and piloted but we have feel quite confident that it will address the requirement. Yeah but we would like to place this request in all startup problems. Definitely sir. So I will uh, because all the uh, pan India we are connected to our regional <coughs> councils. And here there's Mr. Sendal, uh, who looks after the regional council here in Chennai. The Chennai office will definitely do so. I'll connect you with him. It'll definitely be done. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Give the memento to the speaker.